Welcome to the Nova Wealth Show. I am your host, Amy Novakovich. And I'm Jim Novakovich. We're a husband and wife team and co-founders of Nova Wealth Management. We also teach you how to build wealth, advise you how to keep it, and how not to get taken advantage of. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to the Nova Wealth Show. Amy and Jim Novakovich here. We're so happy to be here. Thank you for joining. We are on Twitter at Nova Wealth Management, uh, MGMT, it's abbreviated. Check us out on Facebook, Nova Wealth Management, and then also there's the podcast version of this show, the Nova Wealth Show on iTunes, so check that out because we're going to be using a board today, so if you're, are, if you're already listening to the podcast version of this, uh, we'll kind of walk you through that and you can listen to um, the video version or watch the video version rather on the Woodich Network, so you can go online to the Woodich Network and check us out on there. I want to start today with a story. Is that all right? Yes, please. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. Okay, so um, this is a story of a client of ours, and it was about last year. Was it last year or a little longer? No, I don't. I think it was less than a year. No. Anyway, I I guess that's irrelevant. But the point is, is that he's retired. He lives off of his money. Maybe it was a little over a year. I think so. Um, Anyway, but we'd have to look. But anyway, he lives off of his money. He was starting to get really nervous because the market was hitting new highs every day at that time when the Dow was at 19,000, guys. So we're 4,000 plus points away from that. But at the time, the market was hitting brand new all-time highs. And for, for you that is living off of your money, you freak out, right? Like you kind of think, oh my gosh, oh wait, cut my money in half. You know, what do I do? Yeah, 2008 screwed everybody up. It's so, Massively. oh my gosh, psychologically. It, that, you can't recoup from that. If you're already retired and you're pulling off of your money and you're living off of your money, you, there is no recuperating from that, all right? So you're going to have to go back to work. If that is the case. So what can you do to protect your portfolio when the market is hitting all time highs? And we've got a solution today. Just one. There's, there's quite a few out there, but we're going to go over one specifically in detail today and we'll give you specific examples and numbers. And I really think that um, you'll like it and it'll open your eyes, but there's options out there. So anything else you want to add to that? No. Why don't you explain, why why don't you start it? Well, we're going to suggest today that you consider using put options to protect your downside because there's many, every day we get people who come in here and say, whether they're invested or not invested, maybe people come in and say, is it too late to get in Yeah. or, or they're already in and they say, should we get out? Like the client at 19,000 when he just got out and was waiting for that pullback. Oh, I didn't even say that part. Yeah, he got out. Thank you, I don't think so. Oh, great story. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, he got out because he was scared. I was so focused on what he was feeling at the time. Oh, yeah, I don't think you know? he was I mean, I'm empathizing with what he's feeling because you're scared. You're losing sleep at night thinking about what if my account goes down. So he got out. Well, and us in that position as advisors, I mean... Well, you, you don't want to tell somebody to stay in the market right. and they're suggesting they get out at the all-time highs, so it's tough to argue with them. Well, you don't want to be greedy, so you, it's always good to take gains. We yeah. always say that. But a year later, here we're yeah. 4,000 points higher and he missed out on a lot of upside. So um, so, we're gonna su- so we're going to suggest a, wow. a, an option that, that should be considered. That you wouldn't have to do that. Right. You don't have to get out and go completely to cash. And then not only that, but then guess when you have to get back in. So you have to be right twice. And it's hard enough to be right once. Right. You don't want to have to be right twice. Right. Yeah. So should we should we get to the board? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So in this example, this is, this is a family that owns the S&P 500. And remember, you have to explain it for those that can't see it. Oh, so for those who can't see it, we have an example of someone who owns 100 shares of the SPY, ticker SPY, and that's an ETF on the S&P 500. You want to explain what 
that means? Yeah, so an ETF is just an index. It's exchange traded funds. So an index is just a fancy term for a basket of companies instead of just buying one company. You can buy one position that within that one position is a basket of multiple companies. So it's more diversified. And in this case, the basket is the S&P 500. So it's 500 companies. All right. So, so family owns 100 shares of the SPY and the SPY today is trading at 258.22. So they own $25,822 worth of the S&P 500. And we want to make sure now. Maybe this family got in when they when it was trading at two twenty or two thirty. I'm glad you said. That. So they have a nice game here. So they don't want to give it back in the event that the market pulls back, but they don't want to sell because it could potentially go to two seventy. Right. Well, or it could be somebody that just wants to get in the market, and you go out and buy the SPY today, but you want to protect it because you're like, I'm buying at all time highs. Right. So either way. Either way. It works it works both ways. So what we would do is we would buy the rights to sell our shares at 254. We're gonna buy a February 16, 254 put. Why don't you explain what a put is? A put gives you the right as the buyer of the put gives you the right to sell your shares at what's called a strike price. And in this example, the strike price is two fifty-four. Again, remember it's trading at 258.22 today. So it'd be on a, a four dollar pullback from here. And if you want more details, I know we're skimming over this very fast right now, but we do we are putting out an options course um, and an equities course, like the basics and details of everything options and everything equities, and those will be coming out soon. So you'll you'll have that ability. But I know we're just kind of skimming over this, but you said it, I mean, you said it right. That it's that simple, an option, a put option is the option to sell at a given price, which is called the strike price. So whatever price you agree upon, that's called the strike. Okay, so now in this example, you own an investment of $25,822. When you buy an option, or in this example, when you buy the put, mm -hmm. and you're buying the, the rights to sell your shares at 254, you have to pay something for it. And these are real numbers as of an hour ago. It would cost you $423 out of your pocket to sell those 100 shares at two fifty four. dollars Can you explain here why $4.23 is actually $423? Well, one, one contract, one options contract is equal to 100 shares of a stock. That's why we only had to get one contract because we only own 100 shares. So... To so those of you that are listening, I hope it's you can follow along. Again, if you want to see the video version, because it's probably easier to visual, visually see this, check out the Woodich Network. Good. All right, so we would pay $423. And $423 based on a $25,822 investment is 1.63% of your account value. So I would say it has to be pretty worth it. I mean, it has to... You, you have to be strategizing and stressing out that the downside is a big risk because 1.63% is nothing. Well, it's nothing, but it's something. Well, as, okay. it, has to be, it has to be worth it. And it's very little compared to uh, the client that got out at 19000 and missed out on a 4,000 point move. Oh, that's true. Uh, I wish we would have I done this for him a year ago. I would say it in 1.63% would have been worth it. <laughs> of course, yeah. Yeah. So, so again, okay, so let's run through a, a, a scenario where this you'd be very happy if you did this. So today, the SPY is trading at 258.22. We get the pullback that everyone's afraid of, and and, it, and the SPY goes down 10% to 232. Okay. So by February 16th, this option expires in around 90 days. Yeah, February whenever you 16th. have an option, it's a contract, and it only lasts a certain amount of time. So you have a date when your contract is no longer valid or when it expires. You said 95 days? Uh, 90, roughly 90 days. I don't know the exact number. So uh, if, if the market pulled back 10% and the SPY went to 232, you could turn and sell your 100 shares at 254, even though it's trading at 232. That's why you bought it. That right there is the protection that we're talking about. Right. 
You'd be the smartest guy <laughs> on the golf course if you did this because well, I, I, I promise you. Bucks. Yeah, I promise you, your buddies aren't doing this. Oh yeah, probably. They're not. They're not. This is this is a this is a next level type stuff. It's yeah. it's rather basic, but but nobody does this. Advisors don't really do it. Advisors put you in mutual funds and tell you to hold on. Tell you to hold on. That's the thing. So if you don't want, if you're sick of being told. I just, you know, just hold on, just hang in there. It'll come back, you know, and you want to do something about it. This protects you. And not only that, do you know why I love this strategy too? Talking about next level. This is one step up. This might complicate things. Okay. This might complicate things a little bit, but not for nothing. In your example that you just said, trading at 258, it falls to 232, whatever you said. That's 10%. Okay. I sell it at 254. Not only... Do I look like a genius because I just avoided all those losses? But I also now have all the cash to buy on a huge pullback. And we say pullback, we just mean when the market goes down. The market pulled back or went down 10%. I now have all this cash to buy when the market is down 10%. How yeah. awesome is that? Yeah. So you're double making money on this. Yeah, take all your proceeds at 254 and buy, Turn and buy back, back in at 232, a 10% pullback. Right. Yep. Take some discipline because it's tough. Mm. It's very tough to buy when the market's down. But that's why you hire people like us to have ice in our veins. The psychology of it is difficult. When everything is doom and gloom, you feel like, you know, why would I buy right now? It's so bad. But, like, that's it's, when things go on sale. Yep. Greed and fear. We'll Always say greed and fear. Yes. So, in summary, we'll summarize and we'll, we'll wrap this up. So, in summary, essentially, if you are fearful of the market going down because the market is hitting all-time highs and you want to do something, you want to put some sort of protection on the account or you were considering cashing in and then trying to guess when to buy back in. If you're one of those that you are considering going to cash. Instead, you might want to consider, again, this is not a recommendation. It's not for everyone, but it's something just... Look into it and see if it works for your specific strategy or talk to your advisors, your CPA, your financial advisor, and see if it works for you. But you can buy protection, you can buy a put, and you can essentially protect the downside if, if the market goes down by expiration date. So if you have any questions, feel free to go to our website, novawealthmanagement.com, and go to the contact us page. We're happy to answer them. And, um, you know, we'll come out with other strategies as well, but we'll wrap this up because this one strategy is a lot and all encompassing, but we'll, we'll, there's other things that you can do, which we'll cover in future shows. So see you next time. See you next time. Thank you for joining.